Have you ever felt the wind in your hair and wondered why we don't use it for electricity all the time? It seems like such a simple solution to our energy needs. After all, wind is free and it's everywhere, right? You see wind turbines dotting the landscape in many places. Well, it's not quite that simple. There are many factors that come into play when harnessing wind energy. Turning wind into usable electricity requires us to think about the science of wind and how we can capture its power effectively. Just like a fast-moving bowling ball has more energy than a slow one, wind's energy depends on how fast it's moving. The kinetic energy of the wind is what we aim to convert into electrical energy. A gentle breeze might feel nice on a warm day, but it doesn't have enough energy to turn the blades of a giant wind turbine. These turbines need strong, consistent winds to operate efficiently. We need winds with some gusto to generate electricity. The stronger and more consistent the wind, the more electricity we can produce. This is why you often see wind farms in coastal areas or on open plains where the wind is more reliable. Additionally, maintaining and optimizing these turbines is crucial. Engineers constantly monitor wind patterns and turbine performance to ensure maximum efficiency. Advanced technology and data analysis play a significant role in this process. So, while wind energy is indeed free and abundant, capturing and converting it into electricity is a complex and ongoing challenge. But with continued innovation and dedication, we can harness this powerful natural resource more effectively. Think of a wind turbine like a giant windmill. Its large blades are designed to catch the wind, just like a sail catches the wind to move a boat. When wind hits the blades, they spin. This spinning motion is the key to generating electricity. The spinning blades are connected to a generator inside the turbine. The generator is like the engine of the whole operation. It takes the mechanical energy of the spinning blades and converts it into electrical energy. This electricity then travels through wires to our homes and businesses powering our lives. To really understand how much power we can get from wind, we need to talk about kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. The faster something moves, the more kinetic energy it has. Wind is just air in motion, so it has kinetic energy too. Scientists have a formula to calculate wind's kinetic energy. Kinetic energy equals one-half times air density times the swept area of the blades times wind velocity cubed. This formula tells us that three main things determine how much power we can get from wind air density, swept area, and wind velocity. These elements are crucial in determining how much energy a wind turbine can generate. Understanding them can help us optimize wind farms for maximum efficiency. Air density is how tightly packed the air molecules are. The denser the air, the more energy it carries. This is why wind turbines in colder climates, where air is denser, often produce more energy than those in warmer areas. Denser air means more oomph when it hits the turbine blades. This increased force translates directly into more rotational energy, which the turbine converts into electrical power. The swept area is the circle created by the spinning blades. This area is crucial because it determines how much wind the turbine can capture. The larger the swept area, the more wind energy can be harnessed. Imagine the blades making a giant circle as they rotate. The size of this circle or swept area is directly proportional to the amount of wind energy the turbine can capture. The bigger the circle, the more wind the turbine can capture. This is why modern wind turbines have such long blades, they maximize the swept area to capture as much wind energy as possible. Lastly, wind velocity is simply the speed of the wind. The faster the wind the more kinetic energy it carries, which can be converted into electrical power by the turbine. This one is important because velocity is cubed in our kinetic energy formula. This means that even a small increase in wind speed can result in a significant increase in the energy produced. That means even small increases in wind speed can lead to big jumps in power output. By understanding and optimizing these three factors, air density, swept area, and wind velocity, we can significantly enhance the efficiency and output of wind turbines, making wind energy a more viable and powerful renewable resource. Let's imagine two scenarios to see how these factors work together. By examining these examples, we can better appreciate the complexities involved in wind energy generation. First, Picture a wind turbine on a mountaintop on a cool, crisp day. The location is ideal because the altitude provides a consistent and strong wind flow. The air is denser at higher altitudes, and the wind is blowing strong. This combination of factors means the turbine can operate at maximum efficiency. This turbine is in a prime location to generate lots of electricity. The strong, consistent wind ensures that the blades are always moving, converting kinetic energy into electrical power. 
Now imagine a turbine in a valley on a hot, humid day. Unlike the mountaintop, this location presents several challenges for efficient energy generation. The air is less dense because warm air expands, and there is very little wind. The lack of strong wind means the turbine blades barely move, reducing the amount of electricity generated. This turbine will likely generate much less electricity because the wind doesn't have as much energy. The difference in these two scenarios highlights the importance of location and environmental conditions in wind energy production. By understanding these factors, we can make better decisions about where to place wind turbines for optimal performance. The key takeaway here is that it's all about finding the right balance of air density, swept area, and wind velocity. We need places where the wind blows consistently and with enough speed to make those turbine blades spin. That's why scientists and engineers carefully study wind patterns and weather data when deciding where to build wind farms. They look for places with wind energy potential, meaning locations where the wind conditions are ideal for generating electricity. While we often think of giant wind turbines, even small-scale wind power can be useful. Small wind turbines are becoming increasingly popular for homes, farms, and businesses. These turbines might not generate as much electricity as their larger counterparts, but they can still offset a significant portion of energy needs, especially in areas with consistent breezes. Remember, every little bit helps when it comes to using more renewable energy. If you're interested in learning more, there are tons of resources available. You can visit science museums, explore websites dedicated to renewable energy, or even talk to engineers working in the field. The more we understand about wind energy, the better equipped we'll be to harness its power and create a cleaner, more sustainable future. So, the next time you feel the wind on your face, remember its potential. Wind energy is a powerful force that we can use to generate clean electricity and reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. By understanding the science behind it and exploring its possibilities, we can all play a part in creating a brighter, wind-powered future.